Hello, welcome to Sonograph Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is about the kidney and urinary tracts ultrasound. This is the fifth video in this video series about migratory renal stones. In this video, I will explain what may happen for a migratory renal stone. If a stone passes into the ureter, the calculus may lodge in three areas of ureteric narrowing. At first, ureteropelvic junction. Second, where the ureter crosses the iliac vessels. And three, uterovesical junction. At first, UPJ stones. In UPJ stones, if the stone lodges with its transverse diameter and its longitudinal diameter is along the ureter, causes partial abstraction and renal excretions would pass to the ureter, as you can see in this image. In this situation, because the obstruction is not complete, the patient does not have much pain and the patient may experience intermittent colic pain. When the patient refer for ultrasound, we can see mild renal pelvis dilatation. In this transabdominal ultrasound image from the kidney, we can see here a UPJ stone, here is renal cortex, here is renal pelvis, and also mild renal pelvis dilatation. But here is a question, why obstruction is not complete? Because urinary follow would pass beside the stone into the ureter, as you can see here. In another situation, if the stone loads with its longitudinal diameter, causes complete UPJ obstruction, as you can see here, and renal extrusions could not pass to the ureter simply. In this situation, because the obstruction is complete, the patient may experience severe colic pain. When the patient refers for ultrasound, we can find moderate to severe hydronephrosis. As you can see in this transabdominal ultrasound image from the kidney, we can see here a large UPJ stone. Another one, here is a question. Why here there is severe hydronephrosis? Because obstruction is nearly complete and urinary follow could not pass to the ureter simply. As you can see here. Now, ureteral stones. Clinical presentation in ureteral stones. Usually, calculi in the mid ureter result in pain radiating anteriorly and caudally, which may mimic appendicitis on the right side and diverticulitis on the left side, while pain from distal ureteric calculi radiates to the groin via referred pain from the genitofemoral and ilioinguinal nerves. Again, in ureteral stones, we may have several scenarios. At first, if a stone with large longitudinal diameter and a small transverse diameter enters the ureter and crosses the lumen of ureter by its length or enters by length but its transverse diameter is large, in this situation there is severe obstruction and urinary follow would block, as you can see here and the patient will experience severe renal colic pain. When the patient refer for ultrasound, we can see hydronephroureter and by following the ureter, the stone will be detected, as you can see in this clip. But there are some exceptions for ureteral stones. If a stone with large longitudinal diameter and a small transverse diameter enters the ureter by its length, in this situation, there is no obstruction and urinary follow would pass, as you can see here. Therefore, the patient may be experience mild pain and urinalysis shows microscopic hematuria. When the patient refer for ultrasound, may be seen mild renal pelvis dilatation and sometimes may be normal without any finding. And this matter causes ureteral stones to be missed in the initial ultrasound. When the stone comes down, it may lodge where the ureter crosses the iliac vessels. At this time, the patient will experience severe renal colic pain. 
when the patient refers for ultrasound at second time, we can see severe hydroureter and stone at the level of the iliac vessels, as you can see in this image. Here we can learn the important teaching point. When a stone enters into the ureter with its longitudinal diameter and its transverse diameter is small, it may be missed by sonography initially, as I explained. But after a few days, when the stone loads where the ureter crosses the iliac vessels, we can detect it obviously. Ureter vesicle junction stones Clinical presentation of UEJ stones they cause irritative voiding symptoms such as dysuria and urinary frequency. Very small diameter of the urethrovesical junction, about 1 to 5 mm, accounts for the large percentage of calculi that lodge within the distal ureter. Approximately 80% of stones smaller than 5 mm will pass spontaneously. Usually, UVG stones cause hydronephroureter, as you can see in this transverse abdominal ultrasound image from the bladder, here is the distal hydroureter, and the stones can be detected by ultrasound simply, here we can see a stone with obvious acoustic shadowing. Also, if we use color Doppler ultrasound, we can find twinkling artifact obviously. We must keep in mind a few practical points about UEJ stones. At first, very distended bladder may obscure the UEJ stone and we must do ultrasound again after voiding with semi-full bladder. Practical point 2. If the stone located at distal ureter near the UEJ in fatty patients or if there are excessive bowel gases, it may not be detected by ultrasound and we must do non-enhanced CT in these conditions. In conclusion, the clinical presentation and ultrasound findings of migratory renal stones depend on, as first, the position of the stone at urethropelvic junction, ureter or urethrovesical junction, and the severity of urinary tract obstruction. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter and thank you for your attention.